This is the solution to quiz four. Okay, so the first question is plot this. Okay, so then if we take uh, this equation, and we can move the 3x to the other side, and then it's 3x. <coughs> Uh, plus 4 and then divide by 2 <coughs> so y is 3 halves x plus 2 and that tells us so this tells us that the slope is 3 halves and this tells us that the y-intercept is 0, 2. Okay, so then plotting, <coughs> uh, plotting that point. So this is 0, 2. And then 3 halves. So that means that uh, every time we go to the right 2, we go up 3. So 1, 2, and then 1, 2, Three and uh, <coughs> one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. <coughs> okay, so now find the equation of the depicted plot. Okay, so a point that is on the line is either one of these that were marked out for you. So I'll use the point 1, 1. And then the slope of this line is, uh, well, that would be delta x is 2. And then delta y is 3. So the slope is 3 over 2. So m is delta y over delta x is 3 over 2. And therefore, the equation for a line is y minus y1 is m x minus x1 and this 1 1 is x1 y1 so then plugging all those things in that would be y minus 1 is 3 halves x minus 1 so y minus 1 is 3 halves x minus 3 halves so y is 3 halves x minus 3 halves plus 1. <coughs> and 3 halves is 1.5. And this is 1. So negative 1.5 plus 1 is negative 0.5, or just half. So 3 halves x minus half. Okay, so the next. Okay, so we're given a, a rental offer. Okay, so for each plan, write a linear equation. Okay. So for plan one, <coughs> so for question I and for plan one, y, the cost, is 100 plus 1 times x, because it's $100 per party plus $1 for every child. Okay, and then for plan 2, that would be $400 for a party plus 0 0.25 x because it's uh, 25 cents per child. OK. 
Okay, then I I <coughs> is translated into plain language. Suppose that X is 500. Which plan uh, has the minimum cost? Well, in that case, plan 1, that would be Y is 100 plus 500, which is 600. And plan 2 would be Y is 400 plus <coughs> 0 0.25 times 500. So that would be 0 0.25 times 500. Well, 1 fourth of 500 is 125. So this would be 525. And therefore, Plan 2 has the minimum cost. Okay, for part B, a circle is inscribed in a square. The area of the circle is 25 pi. What is the perimeter of the square? Okay. So, naming these things. So I'll name... Uh, I'll name this measurement X. I'll name this measurement R. Okay, and then naming those, <coughs> we can come up with a story. So then using those names, uh, the, the uh, side length of the square, so length of the square, Calling that x, the radius of the circle, We're calling that r, the area of the square, I'll call that uh, s, and S must be x squared. The area of the circle, I'll call that a, and that's known to be pi r squared. And what we want is we want to find the perimeter of the square. So the perimeter. The square, I'll call that P, and the perimeter of the square must is the length going all the way around, so that's 4x. So these are all things that we knew before the story uh, began, and so what we are requested to do is we're requested to find P given that a is 25 pi. And in fact, we knew one more thing before the story began because of the way the picture <coughs> is drawn. Well, OK. Because, because in the specific case that the circle is inscribed in the square, uh, we're also given another thing, and that is that the radius of the circle is half of the, di is, is half of the length of the square. So that is to say that x is 2r. <coughs> OK. So we'll use this information. So on the one hand, a is pi r squared, and also a is 25 pi. So a is pi r squared, and a is 25 pi. So that means that. <coughs> that pi r squared is r pi r squared is 25 pi so then the pi's cancel 
so that r squared is 25. So r must be 5. Negative 5 is also a solution, but because this is a physical circle, it is negative uh, measurements are excluded. So r is known to be 5. <coughs> And now I can use this information. Well, I'll continue up here. And I'll use this information. To say that, well, if r is 5, <coughs> so r is 5 and x is 2r, Therefore, x is 10. Okay, and therefore the perimeter going all the way around is 4x and x is 10. Therefore, the perimeter is 40. And the last exercise is just some complex arithmetic. So FOIL will do the job. So that would be 40 uh, minus 36i plus 45i. Uh, oh, wait a second. No, this is not right. So firsts, 8 times 5, and then outsides, that'd be minus 32i, and then insides, plus 45i, and then lasts, um, minus 36i squared. So simplifying this, just the i's first, 45 minus 32, uh, that would be 13, so plus 13i minus 36i squared, uh, but i squared is negative 1, so this would be 40 plus 13i plus 36, because what was used here is that i squared is negative 1, and therefore uh, this would be 76 plus 13i. In part b, in part b, uh, to carry this out, 8 plus 9i divide by 5 minus 4i. What we need to do is multiply by 1, multiply by 1, uh, but it has to be sort of cleverly Selected, so I'll say 8 plus 9i divided by 5 minus 4i, and then we want to multiply by 1. <coughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by uh, a fraction. So, what we need, what we really need, is to get the denominator to be real. Presently, it's, it's, it has an imaginary part. Uh, but we want it to be purely real. So to make it purely real, we're going to put the conjugate of this over here and multiply it because the product of conjugates will be real. Uh, but we can't just put this here because we need it to be 1, so we also need to put it in the numerator. So this expression right here is, is 1. So now we just multiply this out, so the numerator foil, so the numerator would be 40 uh, plus 32i plus 45i plus 36i squared, and then divide by 25 uh, plus 20i minus 20i minus 16i squared. So, 
in the numerator, in the numerator, that would be 40, and then just like in part A, I squared is negative 1, so this would be 40 minus 36, so that would be 4, and then 32 plus 45 is 77, <coughs> I. In the denominator, notice that we have plus 20i and minus 20i, so the i's cancel. And then this i squared is negative 1, so this is adding 16. So that would be 25 <coughs> plus 16 is 41. So writing this in simplest terms, this would be 4 over 41 plus 77 over 41. And then finally, uh, this negative can come out of the radical. And when it comes out of the radical, it comes out as the unit imaginary number i. And then can 147 be simplified? Well, it, uh, let's see. Is it divisible by 2? No, it, not even. Is it divisible by 3? Well, 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 7 is 12. So the sum of these digits is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3, which means this is divisible by 3. So this is 100. This 147 is 3 times something. So what goes in here? Uh, let's see. Uh, what, what would that be? It's more than 40. Uh, so 43? No. Yeah, 43. Let's check that with the calculator. So 147 divided by 3. Oh, no, 49. Yeah, 49. So times 49. So now 49 is a square. Uh, it's 7 squared, so this 49 can come out of the radical, and when it comes out of the radical, it comes out as a 7. So this would be 7 square root 3 i. And just to be clear, this 49 came out as a 7. And this <coughs> negative came out as an i.